the live stream to begin, so I welcome everybody here. Nice to see you. Good morning, my name is Brother Mark. I'm one of the licensed practitioners here at Center for Spiritual Living Redlands. It's a joy and honor always to be with you for our Sunday service. And we begin with about a 16 minute meditation. So I'm gonna invite you just to become comfortable in your chair. You may wanna be mindful of your posture and for sure your breathing. And so sometimes it's nice to just drop your palms and your hand face up. And let's take some slow and easy, deliberate breaths in together. Easy and deliberate inhales in. And gentle, deliberate exhales out. I'm inviting us to consecrate this next, next breath as a divine, sacred, holy breath. We breathe that in. And as we exhale out, we release anything and everything that does not match the divine, sacred, and holy within us. We just release that with our breath. Again, we take another nice inhalation of the divine, sacred, and holy breath. And with our exhale out, we release anything and everything that does not match all that is divine, all that is sacred, and all that is holy. Just release it with your exhale. Just allow for yourself to return to the normal, your normal breathing pattern. And allow for everything that is divine, sacred, and holy to infuse every organ action, function, cell, fiber, and atom of your being. Just see that however it comes to you in your mind's eye. Allow it as a self-infusion of good, of your highest and best good now. Some may see twinkling lights, stars, rays of sunshine, however it appears to you. Allow all that is for your highest and best good to infuse every atom of your being in the physical and in the ethereal. Spirit always looks for your permission to, to 
make any messages known that are for your highest and best good on your soul's evolution at this very moment in time. If you're willing, just check in with that. be a word or a phrase. It could be an image or an icon. It could be a song lyric. Spirit knows how to reach you in a way that you would understand. It could be an emoji. Again, we breathe in all that is divine, all that is sacred, and all that is holy. And with our exhale, we release and surrender anything and everything that no longer serves us. If you're willing to release it, let it go. Inviting you to do that with your breathing, inviting to do that through the soles of your feet back to Mother Earth Gaia to be recycled. If it no longer serves you, it's no longer needed. Inviting you to bless and release it with your willingness to surrender. So if it's comfortable for you, allow for yourself to find that place within you that has never been nor could ever be hurt, harmed, or endangered in any way. It is the core of your core, it is the spiritual identity. I call it a spiritual muscle. I'm inviting us now, if you're comfortable with this, to just find that place and infuse it with your love, unconditional love, 
your light, your grace, your recognition of it in you. Just with each breath, you can see this place, once you find it, become bolder and thicker and wider and stronger. You can infuse it with light, love intelligence, the rays of the sunshine, the waves of the sea, the power of nature. Just with our next breath, we make this place bigger and bolder, wider and stronger. It will serve you by your willingness to allow it to do so. It is waiting for our permission to serve you in a greater, bolder, stronger way than ever before. power, this presence, this divine grace, this divine intelligence created each of us whole, complete, perfect. Nothing missing, lacking, needing, nor wanting. And if you're willing, allow yourself to look in a mirror this way now and forevermore. Say to yourself, I am whole, I am complete, I am perfect, even now. If you're willing, allow for your heart space to grasp the joy of this. How good it is to be the beloved in whom spirit is well pleased. How good it is to be divinely created, sourced, supplied, sustained, and maintained. So just simply allow for your heart space to fill with gratitude and this joy with your next breath. And 
gratitude for this time of remembering, this time of meditative contemplation, this time of expanding the sacred connection to source energy, When you're ready, just bring your awareness back to the physical completely. You want to be certain you can feel yourself supported by the chair or floor or wherever you're sitting. You may want to wiggle just a bit to be sure you can feel that connection to the physical. You may want to just tap the fingertips slightly together and the toes to the ground. grateful for all the divine messages that have coming, been come, coming through and will continue to come through. And asking that you keep a secret place within you to be surprised by the spirit within that will show you it is real. When you're ready, just allow for the outer eyelids to gently open. Blessing each person in the space and place. Grateful to each of you, I am. You kept your divine appointment. Check, emoji, smiley face. Namaste. Welcome. Take a look at the person thanks to you. Say God loves you and I love you too. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together, we come together, we come together in the name of love. We come together, we come together, we come together in the name of love. Now look at the person next to you. I recognize the God in you. Feel the love in the sanctuary. I lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together, we come together, we come together in the name of love. We come together, yeah, we come together. Oh, we come together in the name of love from every walk of life. Every creed and color, kinship we unite in honor of the God in each other. Now look at the person next to you, say namaste about you. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. Yeah, we come together. In the name of love, we come together. Oh, we come together. Yeah, we come together. In the name of love. Everybody. Make
make a joyful sound. Here we stand on holy ground. Let us make a joyful sound. Here we stand on holy ground. Let us make a joyful sound. more tune here just to make you officially welcome here I'm in the right place at the right time just where I'm supposed to be I'm in the right place at the right time just where I'm supposed to be and my soul yeah, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. I'm in the right place at the right time. Just where I'm supposed to be. Yes, I'm in the right place at the right, right time. Just where I'm supposed to be. And my soul. Yeah, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. Yeah, my soul is welcome here. My soul is is welcome and my soul is welcome here yeah my soul is welcome here i am getting the message loud and clear getting the message loud and clear getting the message loud and clear my soul is welcome here Here's Holly. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Redlands, California. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube and here in our beautiful sanctuary. My name is Holly, and it is truly a privilege and an honor to welcome you to our Sunday celebration service. <laughs> CSL Redlands is a new thought community living an ancient wisdom philosophy based on the science of mind. The science of mind philosophy was developed in the early 20th century by lecturer and writer Dr. Reverend Ernest Holmes. Dr. Holmes studied truths from all of the world's religious traditions and spiritual paths and developed a fresh new way for us to look at ourselves and how we fit into our world. CSL is an open and inclusive community honoring all people from every background, all races, sexual orientations, gender expressions, and spiritual paths. No matter who you are or where you are on your journey of faith, you are always welcome here. 
Our purpose is to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence, and our vision is a world that works for everyone and all of creation. If you are here with us for the first time, please raise your hand and let us properly greet you. Yay! <laughs> We know that you have a choice for your spiritual community, and again, we are overly delighted to have you with visit with us today. Please gently silence your phones so that you may participate more fully. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. Right here, right now. Right where I am, I pray. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. When I pray, I feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper. My God, when I pray, feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. Right. Right where I am, I pray. When I pray, I feel my love go deeper, my love go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my love go deeper, my love go deeper my God. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. Right here, right now, right where I am, inviting everybody to continue breathing deeply let's take in a divine sacred and holy breath together we release and exhale anything any lower frequencies any lower energies that no longer serve us for our highest and best good just release that with something as simple as your breathing just let it go And as we return to our normal breathing pattern, we're reminded that the divine, that the sacred, that the holy is and always has been us, <laughs> us in form, us in flesh. And so it is from this place of unification and oneness, that's the platform from which I speak this word this day. I'm gonna call this service a celebration of joy and of laughter, of play. Uh, with a sense of humor so that each of us can have a aha moment that we can take out a spiritual tool with us when we leave that we become a bigger bolder stronger wider avenues for the divine in the world and the world needs us so we start with peace within our hearts and our souls within our households 
within our families, within our friends, within our workplaces. Let's take a moment and see that first. Peace with a capital P that always infuses any lower tension, struggle, or strife to, its, to within itself. We take this peace energy now throughout the city, the cities where we reside. Let's take it from this to the entire state of California, from the deserts to the seas to the mountains, all the freeways, north, south, east, west. See it to our neighboring states and see this divine peace that passes human understanding. See it spread throughout the United States. Like an energetic field of beauty and grace, harmony, ancient wisdom, divine intelligence. And if you're brave enough, come with me across the oceans. And let's now bless the world. There are many places with struggle and strife at this moment, even war. In Israel, see that for a moment in your mind's eye so that conflicts are resolved using more and more divine intelligence, anchoring into divine peace, seeing indeed a world that works for everyone. We're gonna go now to Armenia, which is my motherland, my family's motherland in my DNA. We're gonna call forth for peace, in the Arktosh region. We go now to Ukraine. And see every city, village, and town from north to south, east to west, covered in a peace shield. See it hermetically sealed. only peace may enter. We call forth in all regions of the world that have struggle and strife and that are in need of supplies to continue to receive those supplies and aid. Not forgetting the places that have had flooding, earthquakes, devastating fires, even still right in Maui, Lahaina, town needing to be rebuilt. So each of us is a peace ambassador. I think that's the most important work we can do this day is just to remember that peace, that peace that passes human understanding, let it uh, reach those that are struggling or in strife, hungry, in prison, dying. And now I'd like us to just take a moment to allow for our own individual and personal blessings and demonstrations and manifestations to appear even before we leave the sanctuary space today. It's because we call them forth. So if you're willing, just call forth for your highest and best good. Just allow it. If you want to say it out loud, just say, I call forth my highest and best good right here and right now. Let yourself hear yourself say that. Know that spirit and the universe conspire always to provide this to you by your willingness to receive it. So I see a lot of blessings, a lot of transformation, a lot of revelation, a lot of healing. And what we in the human may call a miracle, I know in the divine, it is ordinary. And so I'm gonna call forth with great expectation that all of it is true and that all of it is so. And with the a sense of um, 
playfulness and, and surrender, I release my word now to the law of life, knowing indeed it is fulfilled. So with a heart filled with gratitude, I'm inviting each of us to breathe in that gratitude. And if you want to seal the prayer with me, join me in saying, and so it is. All right. Well, thank you for all that. And I'd like to invite up, thank you very much. There's Gilman Carver, our, our music. <laughs> thank you. Reading, I know. I know. He's trying to keep me on track. He goes, oh, okay. hey, it's time for the reading. We're, we're trying to receive some of your, if you're going to clap, we're going to receive your love, right? That's part of it all. So we thank you for that. And I thank you for going with us to this uh, space. When Gilman plays the first song, it's usually a meditative or contemplative uh, mood, vibe. That's what David calls it. And then we go into the prayer. And now we have a reading. Um, I believe, is it an original that you did? So David Loveland, everybody's going to come up and do that part. Okie doke. So I wrote a poem. Um, and it's inspired by a song called Liar. And I am blanking on the artist. He's an independent artist. I've heard it a couple times. And it just kind of inspired me to write a poem. And then in my normal David fashion, I have something that I will over explain the poem. Um, honesty. Fingers point, we see. Question. Why aimed at me? This blame spotlight the truth, but we're all flawed, me and you. So let's humility take lead, express our faults, a genuine need, weight of actions we deeply feel. I'm sorry for wounds to heal. Yet here's where stubbornness takes hold, admitting wrongs, a story untold, not always ready for amends, pride, a blinding lens. A blinding lens. Acknowledge that we deceive, but in truth, let's believe. Deception is in this masked world true. Selves, lies, unfurled. Yearning for someone strong to say, take off that mask, you belong. But in a world of filtered speech, truth and thoughts are hard to reach. Layers of distortion, games we play, lost in translations, are the price we pay. Strip these masks we wear, find truth we must dare. Ego a foe in our quest for truth, blocking connection since our youth. Integrate it well and we will see genuine connection, you and me. Challenge the filters within and without, confront the illusion beyond doubt. Call for bravery to face what's real in a world of honesty Love will heal. The lying man. I, uh, I will over explain it. The lying man or woman. You know that moment when we realize that fingers of blame are pointing in our direction? Questions arise echoing through our thoughts. Why is blame directed at me? This is the initial recognition of the fact that judgment surrounds all of us. And we find ourselves in the spotlight. We, yet we dive deeper into the human experience. It's not just about our individual predicaments. It's a mirror reflecting the universal truth that we've all erred in our unique ways. At this stage, humility steps forward and we express our shortcomings with genuine remorse. The weight of our actions is felt and we utter the words, I'm sorry. Not just to others, but to ourselves. We yearn for understanding and with an open heart, we beg for forgiveness and grace. It's a plea for compassion and a desire for reconciliation. A shared recognition that we are all flawed, being seeking understanding in a complex world. This unveils another layer of human complexity, stubbornness. Where con we're confronted with the realization that admitting our wrongs is a daunting task. Pride, ego, and the fear of vulnerability are the are the mighty foes we must conquer. We understand that we're not always in the right state of mind to accept our wrongdoings, but we fervently wish others possessed the strength to acknowledge their own. Self-awareness that acknowledges the persistence of human pride, which sometimes blinds us to our own imperfections. 
But this concept reveals a darker side, deception. It explores the idea that we're, we are not always truthful in our interactions with others. Society's expectations, personal biases, and the fear of judgment often lead us to wear masks. We become the lying man or woman, skillfully deceiving others to fit into predefined roles. The concept emphasizes the importance of someone seeing through this facade, of finding a kindred spirit brave enough to say, you're wrong. It's a cry for authenticity, a longing for someone to remove the mask we've doned to reveal our true selves. And then comes the realization that communication in this world of masks is inherently flawed. Our thoughts and words must traverse a labyrinth of filters. These filters aren't just ours. They belong to everyone we interact with. It's like playing a game of telephone with our true selves as the messenger, as the message. Each layer of filtering distorts the message, making it, it challenging to connect authentically. The frustration of lost, uh, this is frustration of loss, lost meaning and the obstacle that hinder our collective progress. Yet there's a glimmer of hope, a notion that if we strip away these filters and confront our own true selves, we can achieve genuine communication. The concept champions self-understanding uh, uh, and self-honesty as the foundation for authentic interaction. It's the belief that by first being honest with ourselves, we can become vessels for a higher truth, a truth that transcends personal biases and societal expectations. Ego, the great barrier to truthful communication, is spotlighted as the antagonist in this narrative. It's when we set aside our own ego that we can genuinely connect with others. True connection happens when communication, without the need for validation or self-preservation, it's the dance of two souls bearing their truth without fear, creating a space for genuine ego-free communication and connection. In the end, we challenge ourselves to confront not only the filters others possess, but also the ones we carry within ourselves. We call for bravery, a willingness to challenge our own illusions, and an acknowledgement of the complexities of human interactions. It's authenticity, a plea for truth, a vision of a world where honesty reigns supreme. Thank you, David. And so if anybody else has anything original that's in your soul or you want to be part of the service and do a reading, I can select many for you. <laughs> so if you're into that, just let us know after service. Let any of us. You want to do one, Rosemary? Yes. Okay, so we're going to do it. How about for next week? Is that good? Okay. Yeah, and that, we'll, we'll set you in there um, for next week you're on. I really appreciate that. And if you want to come up, great. Otherwise, we have a hand mic too. So whatever you want to do. You don't have to be on camera, just so you know, because we do live stream. And now I just want us to take another moment um, after the reading just to center ourselves, and then we'll go in today's talk. We actually could just pass the, the bucket, right? Because that was a good message right there. Thank you. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper. My heart go deeper into my God when I pray. I feel my heart go deeper. My heart go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am, I right here right now right where I am I pray thank you so much Gilman and so is everybody ready to receive another message let's do it all right thank you my name is brother Mark I'm one of the licensed practitioners here at CSL Redlands 
and I am grateful to each of you for being here present and all those who watch remotely. If you're watching remotely, let us know from where you're, you're, you're watching and you can uh, participate in chat. David is very good and Iris in the sound booth of communicating with you. All month, we're, there's a theme and they're given to us by Center for Spiritual Living headquarters. If you want to know more about CSL, you can go to csl.org later, not during service, and check it out. And it's pretty amazing. It's a wonderful institution. So um, the idea of playing with paradox, I first resisted that. I must, know, I must let you know. And today's talk title is Getting Comfortable with Discomfort. I also resisted that, just so you know. And at 3.19 a.m., I don't know why I was wide awake, because I, I, we did go to sleep early. What, seven? Hold on. Let me get you a microphone now if you're going to participate and be rowdy. This is a, a reverent place, so we test, test. we allow the, the gallery to comment within reason. No, no, I also it's just the fact that I also woke up stupidly early today. How how early? I mean, I woke up at five a.m. Five. Okay, that's early, huh? Yeah, I usually wake up at six, but you know. And I never wake up at three nineteen. <laughs> All right, can you go ahead and turn the bottom part off for me, and then hold it there because there might be other people who want to share too. So this idea, this, this was really important because when I get up here and speak, I always have something planned, right? And I have a lot of quotes, I have a lot of material. But then I always leave a space for, um, I call it spirit, you could call it God, you could call it intelligence, uh, love, you could call it grace, you could call it whatever you want to call it. I'm encouraging everybody to find what you call it. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to call it anything. I've taught classes to people who are atheists, and that's fine. We welcome people of all faith and no faith. It doesn't really matter. We're never going to, we can teach you how we pray. We could teach you how Ernest Holmes be, uh, believes our prayer is scientific, and that means there's, it's in five steps, and that it's repeatable, and it's demonstrable. And the steps, I don't even know why I'm talking about this, are recognition, unification, realization, thanksgiving, and release. And by next week, if we can find our banner, you can see we used to have a banner. We'll stick it up there by next week. We'll have that one up there. If you want more info about that, just see me after, and I'm sure we have handouts as well, and I'll make sure. Oh, actually, you know what? We just did amazing handouts that I'll bring next week, and we can send to you online if you want. Just request it, or I'll bring them next week, because we were recently invited to the University of Redlands, remember? And we did um, their Monday prayer. And so we had a big thing of handouts that was specifically about prayer. So I promise next week, I'll have all that material here. And if you want it or need it sooner, just let us know. So let me tell you why I woke up at 319, because now I've really gone off the cliff. I was in jury duty all week. What's the talk title? Getting comfortable with discomfort. Nine days. It's not a lot. One of the ladies in the jury room said she had to do five weeks and uh, that's 20 days. The court was only open Monday to Thursday. And then somebody looked up because they thought we would be on it. They said, what, what is the longest record for a jury, jury to serve in California? Does anybody have an idea? I'm not sure if it's even true, but one of our guys named Dan researched it. How, how long do you think? 22 weeks. No, oh, not, the, not 22 weeks. It was 55 days, I think. That's a lot of days. I'll tell you what. Yeah, you, you, get, you got it right. You got it about right. So it's a, right. That's, it was 55 days. So um, this idea of getting comfortable with discomfort, I want to make sure that I say why I woke up at 319. Because I don't want you to think that when I speak up here, um, being like flippant or trite or like this is major. Because I don't want you to really get comfortable with discomfort. Because think about it. That's how a lot of things happen where we're like, that we really probably should have paid more attention to before. Because then we're just ignoring things and go, oh, you know, don't worry about it. I'm just going to pray on it. What? <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm just going to meditate on that. I see a hand in the back. Yes, sir. Isn't like a major part of Stoic philosophy the idea of, uh, 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 the idea of like intentional discomfort? And like the exact thing you're mentioning, it feels very much like the, the idea of forced discomfort in Stoic so. philosophy. And I think so, because if you look at many of the great master teachers, they either disappeared, right? Look at, uh, didn't Jesus disappear? 
and then come back? I don't mean disappear like I dream of genie or like bewitched. I mean disappear, disappear. It's a sojourn or a journey, right? It's, a, it's that journey that, you, that all of us must take within. And so what I wanted to, to say about why I was awoken at 319 and uh, what's, I want us to make sure that, that all you take out of today's talk, and you're going to get a lot of quotes and some information, is just the idea that when discomfort comes, why don't we try to, to uh, ask it, like, what is it that you're trying to teach me? Uh, I see a lot of head shaking, which I'm so grateful to have uh, the head shaking in the room. That's Heather and Shannon back there, but we don't give last names. And they liked the emoji idea earlier. So the, the thing is, is when things come into our lives, even breakups, right? Even something a family member may say, maybe you get this crazy email at your work. You don't have to respond to all those things immediately. I'm going to encourage all of us, we talked about this several weeks in a row about going to neutral. I'm going to encourage all of us to become mindful. Maybe that's when we turn within and we use our spiritual toolbox. Some of us are very old and remember a cartoon on TV. And if you don't know it, and I'm going to give my age out right now, Google it later. Felix, is, that, is it the cat? The wonderful, wonderful cat. Now, didn't he have a toolbox all the time? He had a bag of tricks. But the bag of tricks is our consciousness. The bag of tricks is that he needed a hammer. Oh, he got a hammer. He needed more vision. He got an extra pair of glasses. He needed to be heard. He got the microphone. You know, he needed, right. He, do you see? It's our consciousness. So I, let me finish this one idea, and that, that might be all that I get to do, but let's see. So I don't want you to get lazy. Okay, that's the thing. Geez, because I thought if I come up here and I say, I want you to get comfortable with discomfort, that's the most ridiculous thing that I could ever ask anybody to do. David, you have to use the mic, so Seven's going to now bring you the mic. And let me finish the thought before I go back to you. Oh, whoa, 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 careful, careful. It's okay, careful. It's a good thing because our technician didn't see. Nobody saw. So don't worry about it. I don't want you to get um, lazy. I don't want you to get medicated. Because if you really watch, and, and we have to mute all the um, ads in the house with the, if you just listen to the side effects of the medications, why would you ever want to take that if you had to? If you could, you know, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't if you need it. We want to bless all the programs. We want to bless them and release them if they're herbs, when you're taking your food. Perfect assimilation, perfect elimination. I guess what I'm trying to say with this is I'm not asking anybody to get complacent and lazy, and I'm not asking you to use your spiritual teaching as an excuse to do nothing. Whoa. If there, somebody had a mic, you could drop it because <laughs> that's how I feel. It's a mic drop. I'm, okay, now that I have that preface, we could talk more. You go first, and then I'm going to go next. I think it mostly goes down to people's categorizations of what they actually believe is discomfort and what yeah. is just a natural state right. of being within life. Like Very having good. sweat on the back of your neck, somebody could see as discomfort. It's not. Right. It could be just that you sweat a lot and it yeah. could be hot outside. And so, so people categorize it differently. Um, every human being needs food, shelter, and companionship. Yeah. Everything past that point is a bonus in this life. Yeah. And so we just are super grateful for the bonuses, but we accept that life can be uncomfortable. Very good. And if you want to get really uncomfortable, sign up for jury duty. <laughs> so, because it, it gets so, like, there's many blessings that I learned from there, and I'll include them in, in other talks. Do you want to say something? Gary, right? Okay, Gary, they're bringing you the mic, and then I'm going to ask for eight minutes, and then we're going to go back to the mic. No, go ahead. Make sure it's on. No, it's okay. Sorry to, we, sorry. we want to hear from you. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're not interrupting. Um, you know, I found that uh, I was listening to a lecture not long ago uh, from Manly Palmer Hall about w the world's soul under pressure. And uh, I, I just feel like, like right now we're under a time where it's like kind of like animals before an earthquake. Yes. And I don't know about you guys, but... Um, I think everyone feels it to a certain extent. And make sure you could speak so we could hear. You said the soul. Um, we're, we're, yeah, we're, there we go. That's better. World soul. The world soul. Under pressure. Under pressure. Absolutely. And I think everybody's feeling it. You know, I, I think we all have a sixth sense and we can all feel it. You know, we want to be more loving towards each other. 
Mm -hmm. We want to have fellowship. We want this room to be full. Absolutely. But Tell a friend, bring a friend. You know, but uh, I just think everybody's feeling it to a certain extent. And I know that, uh, you know, that you can relate to that. But I don't want to take up too much time. I just want to say that I'm grateful to be here. And at with the point I'm at in my spiritual journey, my fiance and I, um, is a point of fellowship. Oh, nice. I don't think we can do this alone, you know, in nice. a sp spiritual journey. And I think it's real important, not only for her and I, but for everybody. And I'm not saying I'm good at it, but I want to get better at fellowship. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for the Thank you, Gary. That was beautiful. So, yeah, you could turn it off, but keep it near you because we, you may have something else or somebody else. So this is a beautiful idea because I don't want to scare you, but you can research later. How many years past the big one, meaning earthquake, is California? Is a... Okay. Now, so the idea of getting comfortable with discomfort. I think we've pretty much almost gone through all of it because the, the idea is as things come in, they're all lessons. I think everything that we're experiencing is a lesson and we can ask it, what is it that you're trying to teach me that's for my highest and best good? Just whatever it is, it doesn't matter what category it is. And if it's not ready to answer you, don't force it. Go to the next thing. Uh, we have a lot of things going on. Um, I didn't really realize how busy I was till I had to cancel everything I had. Because <laughs> I was in custody, technically, right? We had to get walked places. And actually, you really can't be late. And it's the only place I've ever gone where I'm on time, and then it's, it's okay if they don't start. Right? So I can't... What's that? Yeah, it's hurry up, and then you're there, and they count you. And sometimes... And I love what they did. They, they, uh, they, had a, um, they even did roll call one day early, like 10 minutes. You're like, what's that all about? Because we're, we're not even supposed to be here for ten, you know, five or seven more minutes. So, but it's, a, it's like an idea to keep you trained to be, to be available. All the military members are relating to me right now. And then whoever's in... We don't know what's happening inside, but we're not meant to hear that either. And so it could be... And also, you know that in some of these things, they settle, right? Before... I think... I don't know. By this time, it might have been too late. But there may have been a plea deal or something struck, and maybe it's all over and we just get to go. I'm going to talk more about it because I learned so much. Because what you were talking about, you're in a room... And you're not to leave the room with 12 people. All of us had our own masks that you talked about. All of us had our own beliefs. And there's a phrase, and I have to think, I had it, and then I, average disposition. If you want to really have a mic drop moment, try to figure out in the law an instruction that's a person of average disposition. So it's that idea of getting comfortable with, with um, discomfort, right? So it was that idea, and I knew I was gonna get picked, and the odds are not in my favor of getting picked. I've never been picked in many, many years that I've lived. I've never been picked, but this time I knew I was gonna get picked. Even though I, I didn't get picked right away, I just knew I was gonna get picked. And um, later on, in future weeks, I'll tell you how you can get out of it. <laughs> And some other things that I learned, because there are, there are literally ways to do that. And if anybody gets called before, contact me. I'm here to help. Seven? Say it one more time. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I don't really know, because it's up to the judge. I do know this. If you can't be there, you can easily go and get yourself rescheduled. That's what mostly happens. So this whole idea of getting comfortable with discomfort, and I hope that I gave you my caveat, right? It's I want you to be, oh, you to be your own judge. You to be your own jury of all the facts and elements and evidence that come into play. Like, how did these things happen that were in David's reading? Um, it's the litmus test. You are, are you being, uh, are, are you being of, what did I just say before? Um, uh, average disposition? <laughs> right because sometimes we get triggered on certain things right that we where we couldn't sit there impartially so let me go to let me go to some quotes and things and we'll be done pretty soon so the idea that was in here is this um, you know what happens to in a chrysalis when the caterpillar goes in metamorphosis. say it again metamorphosis. metamorphosis yes let me just read that there's a period in the life cycle of a monarch butterfly, the pupa stage, that by all outward appearance seems as if nothing at all is happening. At this point, the butterfly is really nothing more than an embryonic soup, a fluid filled sack of cells. But inside of that protective chrysalis, nothing could be further from the truth. Miracles are taking place. 
things are coming together. Tiny cells are differentiating into the butterfly's various organs, and the really amazing part is that everything the butterfly needs to transform is already inside the caterpillar. All those specialized cells, although they were in their infant stages and or dormant, they were inside the caterpillar, caterpillar waiting for the right time to move into action. And I think it's the wings as they come to expand, break the cocoon, right? It's the same as me. It's the same as you, 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 you. If somebody in our lives is trying to make us something we're not sooner than we're not, they're going to bust our cocoon, and we may have some issue flying. Hmm. So the whole idea of the talk today is that as things that come into your experience and your awareness that cause discomfort, just ask it. What are you trying to teach, right? What is the lesson that I'm to learn from my highest and greatest good? If it doesn't come, move on to the next thing and take it into your spiritual practice. Meditation, contemplation, silence. Don't respond, right? This neutral um, journaling, songwriting, poetry. We have to have exercise. I, I missed uh, almost all my regular you know, training sessions and things. Um, except for maybe one day I went out at night and played some pickleball and yelled and screamed, which I did for every ball. Even if it wasn't a hard ball to get, I'd be screaming because I needed to get it all out, all the things I couldn't do during the day, although some of it I did do in the room. So the other part of in, in the talk is that um, in our teaching, Holmes is clear that we're, we're uh, spiritual beings living in the, in the human experience. That's what Gary was speaking, and in the human experience, it's heavy. It's burden-laden. It's a deep energy. So um, in, this, in this whole idea, um, we, we're quick to label people, too, and so the, the, um, one of the talking points for the day that I thought was really good is instead of saying, you know, um, to being so quick to judging or to, to try to categorize somebody else to make us feel better, Right? We want to know what political party somebody is. We want to know uh, what do they eat. <laughs> we want to say, um, you know, maybe you could even do that with TV shows. You know, do you watch this or do you watch that? Uh, maybe we do it with sexuality. Um, the idea is to use the power of and. To use the power of and. So we want to make sure we don't go or, like it's either A or B. But and we, don't, we already talked last week about not using the word but and using the word and. I see your hand up. My question is, did, did Holmes ever like, mention Socrates in any book? Right? Because this entire subject does feel very stoic in nature. And it feels like, like as if, if that was a, a curious topic. I would say I, I have to research more and let me do that because in our library, and anybody can take any of the the books from the library, I think you might have an answer there. Um, let, let me meet you after because there's also, for every word or quote, there for teachers like Dr. Ruth's mater materials back there with Dr. Ruth Wilkerson, the pictures on the piano was one of our longest serving ministers. There are cross references even before the computer that were done in books, they're awesome. Like you can look up in the glossary of the science of mind, any single word, and you might have exactly the answer to your question. I'm gonna encourage everybody to check that out at the end. So I wanna uh, leave you with this idea of this and. So instead of being quick to judge or quick to try to categorize somebody to make us feel more comfortable, let's just have an and. And then if we're not comfortable with what we're learning from the and, let's at least go to neutral. And so um, I'm gonna read this part. Often we stand on one side of a polarity or another, our language, our way of moving through the world, the questions we ask one another and the ways that we seek meaning in our lives, all lend themselves to standing on one side of a polarity. Are you a morning person or a night owl, coffee or tea? You know, I talk, talked about the um, political things. Do you like cats or dogs? Well, why can't you like both? <laughs> Are you introvert or extrovert? Uh, and then sexuality things. I'm a big picture person, but my boss focuses on the details. Society, our society that Gary was uh, speaking about too is determined on picking a side, right? And I'm here to say there's that third way where you could pick the and. And 
that person does this and I'm not going to get triggered by it. And I'm going to include them in, 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 in all creation, in that world that works for everyone. That's the vision and mission of CSL. So even when you choose a side, then we're giving energy to that side, right? And, it, and then we only see, we start to see the defects in the other side. Like we try, we try to make a case for why our side is a better side. And this is happening right now in every major deb debate or world worldview of our time. It's exactly what you spoke about, that heaviness of the soul. So there's a quote from Brian Emerson. It's from the, the title of the book, Navigating Polarities. It says, using both and thinking to lead transformation. Standing in the third way is a practice. It relies on a way of being and doing that most of us were never taught. It requires self-awareness, conscious choice, and courageous action. Okay. So, are there areas in your life where you're holding tightly to a polarity? Are there? So it's just that idea when you leave here, you can start thinking about that. Are you willing to use that third way of thinking, the and, so that we can uh, implement that in our lives individually and collectively, then find solutions to the biggest challenges that the world is facing? From Holmes, uh, this is page 16 of Science of Mind magazine that was done in 1971. And let us not forget the importance of keeping our minds in a state of good-natured flexibility. Yes, we must be flexible and tolerant, as well as positive and affirmative. Are you guys willing to say that as an affirmation? Did that sound pretty good? So I'm going to create that into an affirmation. I am good-natured and flexible. I am good-natured and flexible. Are you? Convince me. I am good-natured and flexible. I am tolerant as well as positive and affirmative. Are you? <laughs> Let's try that again. I am tolerant as well as positive and affirmative. And I'm going to go on to another one. Only say it if you agree. It's from this thing called you. Keep the doorway of your mind open, feeling, thinking, communing with this life. Know that it fills you with light and with power. Isn't that beautiful? That's Holmes. I love Holmes. So I keep the doorway of my mind open. I feel, think, and commune with this life. I know that it fills me with light and with power. Wow, that's beautiful. It's so beautiful to hear you all say that too. Just going to do a quick check and we're just about complete. Ah, this is from somebody really brilliant named Niels Bohr, B-O-H-R. It is the hallmark of any deep truth that its negation is also a deep truth. And this was a good one from Richard P. Feynman, F-E-Y-N-M-A-N. I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. Okay. I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. So this is not something by Scott Aubrey that I'll turn into an affirmation if you're willing. Knowing that God is everywhere present in all things and all people, I remember that when it feels like I'm between a rock and a hard place. I am surrounded by infinite presence embraced by divine love. So if you agree, then let me flip it into an affirmation. I know that God is everywhere present, I know that God is everywhere present. in all things and in all people. I am surrounded by infinite presence. I am embraced by divine love. And this is Eckhart Tolle from The Power of Now. When challenges come, and they always do, make it a habit to go within at once and focus on the inner energy field of your body. Attention is the key to transformation, and full attention implies acceptance. Attention is like a beam of light, the focused power of your consciousness that transmutes everything. 
into itself. So I'm going to throw this in there because a lot of people have experienced a broken heart at one time or another, or they will. You're welcome. This is from Douglas Block, Healing from Depression. There's no pain quite like that of a broken heart, but a broken heart, I'm going to change that now. There's no pain quite like that of a broken heart, and a broken heart is an open heart. And when this happens, a transformation can take place. In the midst of the pain, we feel a softness and vulnerability that are truly beautiful. We become more accepting and open. Judgment and criticism are replaced by a compassion for others and an acceptance of life. Scott Aubrey again. We can face the difficulty that is before us and understand where the discomfort resides. You can do like a spiritual check, right? You do your own energy, energy check. Even when we avoid the encounter, the tension carries on within us. With faith and courage, we can embrace it and bring it into the conversation, into action. It is possible to bring the discomfort into the light of healing and resolution. From Eckhart Tolle, just part of this quote, real inner growth usually does not come when things are going well. <laughs> Should I do that again? Real inner growth does not happen when things are going well. That's not where awakening happens. Awakening comes when chaos breaks into your life, when you're out of your comfort zone. From Buddhism, the Buddha, and this is the closing. There is a middle way between the extremes of indulgence and self-denial, free from sorrow and suffering. This is the middle way, which gives rise to vision, which gives rise to knowledge and leads to peace, direct knowledge, enlightenment, and wisdom. Thank you all. And while Gilman's getting the guitar strapped on, I want to welcome all the people who are here. It's beautiful to see that we can create a new center every single week, right? Thank you for coming back. I want to thank Rosemary. Rosemary is going to do our reading next week. Rick, welcome back. I want to thank uh, David for the reading. Um, it is Cornell, right? Welcome. If you want to show anybody else your, the rest of your necklace later, we're now considering you close to enough to us to do that. I want to thank Pat for coming back another time, and for Shannon and Heather. Isn't it feel nice to have everybody here? I want to thank you all. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so the topic for the month has to do with paradoxes. And every time I think of paradoxes, I think of Joni Mitchell. She wrote a lot of songs about paradoxes. And this is, I'm just going to read the first couple lines of this. This is a song that I was going to do for the centering song earlier, but I decided against it. Um, it's off her Hissing of Summer Lawns album, and the song's called Shadows and Light. I'll just read the first part here. Every picture has its shadow, and it has some source of light. The perils of benefactors, the blessings of parasites. I didn't. I decided not to do the rest of it because it's pretty complex for for a centering song. But I will do this one, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Feel free to sing along. Rows and flows of angel hair and Ice cream castles in the air Feather canyons everywhere I've looked at clouds that way But now they only block the sun They rain and snow on everyone So many things I would have done 
but clouds got in my way. I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow it's clouds illusions I recall. I really don't know clouds at all. Moons and Junes and Ferris wheels, the dizzy dancing way you feel as every fairy tale comes real. I've looked at love that way.